Hi, I'm Yogi, this is Liz, this is Tom, and today we're going to show you how to take some simple electronic parts to make an electrochemical cell that will split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The first thing we're going to do is use some simple electronic parts to make a galvanostat. Galvanostat comes from the root galvano and stat, which means to control the current or hold the current constant. And that's what we're going to do with this device, is hold the current constant in our electrochemical cell. To do this, we're going to use four batteries to provide a high voltage, a solderless breadboard, and a voltmeter to monitor the voltage across our electrochemical cell. We're also going to use a resistor to control the current in our electrochemical cell. We're going to use some simple wires to connect up the system. Tom's connecting positive lead of one battery to the negative lead of the next battery. As you'll see, each battery is connected in series, positive to negative, positive to negative. This will allow the voltages in each battery to add, giving us a high total voltage. It's important to make sure that none of the leads touch each other, because that will cause the electrochemical cell to short. Next, what we're going to do is connect the batteries to the solderless breadboard. Now that the power supply is connected to the breadboard, we're going to insert a resistor between one connection and another position in the board. It's not critical where it's connected, but it is important that the connection lead connects directly to the resistor. In our case, the breadboard connects horizontally. Listen time, we're going to now connect alligator leads to the end of the resistor and also the other end of the circuit, and both of them are going to be connected to the voltmeter. And now those two leads are going to be connected to the voltmeter. The negative side should be connected to the black end of the voltmeter, and the positive side will be connected to the red end. Don't worry if you misconnect it, it will simply cause the voltage to read negative. But what we're most important in, what we're most interested in is the magnitude of the voltage, not the sign. Right now the voltmeter is simply reading the sum of the four voltages from the batteries. The reason is that the electrical circuit is not connected to anything that draws power, and so the voltage is just the sum of the batteries. Next, we're going to connect it to the electrochemical cell, which is going to draw power. It's going to use that power to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Before we can connect the galvanostat to the electrochemical cell, we need to prepare the electrodes. And today, we're going to be using two nickel electrodes. Nickel electrodes are not very good at making hydrogen and oxygen. They're poor catalysts, but we're going to use, we're going to grow a catalyst on these electrodes to make the reaction faster in the electrochemical cell. In order to clean the nickel electrodes before we use it in our electrochemical cell, we're going to simply dunk them into some cola beverage. The cola beverage is a little acidic and it'll clean the surface of the nickel electrode. It's important in the electrochemical cell to position the electrodes at a constant distance from each other. So we're using a piece of styrofoam to hold the relative position of the electrodes the same throughout the experiment. Now Liz is going to put the styrofoam holder with the two electrodes into the beaker that's going to serve as the electrochemical cell. Now we're going to connect the galvanostat to the electrochemical cell. It's important again to try to minimize to prevent the electrode leads from touching each other. It doesn't matter which lead is connected to which nickel electrode. As you can see when we're doing this experiment, we've, we've taken great caution to make sure that the two leads from the two uh, electrodes of the electrochemical cell are not touching each other. If you happen to touch those two leads together, the batteries will heat up. So Please be careful and, and to not have the leads touch each other. Now that everything is set up, we can look back at the voltmeter, and we should notice that the voltage is the same as before when we connected to the electrochemical cell. So why is that, Yogi? The reason is that there's no solution in the electrochemical cell right now, and so it's not conducting. The electrochemical cell is an open circuit. And because of that, we're not drawing any power from the galvanostat. Now we're simply going to take the electrodes out of the beaker and add a conductive solution. The conductive solution we're using is phosphate buffer. Why does it have to be conductive? 
it has to be conductive in order to be able to pass charge through the electrochemical cell, or in order to allow the current to flow. Now that we've added a conductive solution to our electrochemical cell, we're going to add the electrode leads back into the cell. We're also going to turn on stirring from this stir plate. That's going to make sure that the flow of solution to the, electric, to the electrical leads is fast. You will notice that now the voltage reading on the voltmeter is much lower than it was before. It's now not the sum of the voltages between the batteries, but rather equal to the voltage across the electrochemical cell. And it's reading about 2.2 volts now. And we're going to see how this voltage changes when we add a catalyst to the electrodes. We're going to take the electrode leads out of the solution, and we're going to add some simple cobalt nitrate. This is a salt of cobalt, and you just want to add a tiny pinch, just a few granules of this compound, to the electrochemical cell. You'll notice that the crystals will dissolve in the electrochemical cell fairly rapidly. Once that's occurred, we're going to add back the nickel leads to the electrochemical cell. You will immediately notice that the voltage that's being read by the voltmeter is dropping. And it will continue to drop as the catalyst forms on the electrodes. So why does the voltage drop, Yogi? That's a great question, Tom. When we've added the catalyst, that's going to make it easier to do the reaction. Now, in this case, we're using the galvanosat to hold the current constant. In this case, in electrochemistry, the current is directly proportional to the rate at which we're making hydrogen and oxygen. And so if the rate of the reaction is held constant, by adding the catalyst, we're going to measure how much voltage is required to sustain that rate. As the catalyst is applied to the electrodes, it makes the reaction easier to do, and so the voltage drops. On this, this is the nickel electrode on this side, and this is where hydrogen evolution is occurring. There's no catalyst that's formed on this electrode because the catalyst forms when you oxidize cobalt that we added to the solution. Now on this electrode here, which is uh, the the anode is where oxygen is forming, and you can see a discoloration on that electrode. There's sort of a brown-black film on the surface of the electrode, and that is the catalyst. And that's allowing you to get the oxygen evolution to occur much more efficiently. So on this side, the bubbles are hydrogen, and on this side, the bubbles are oxygen. Now Tom's going to remove the leads from the electrochemical cell, and we're going to swap the cell for one that contains fresh phosphate buffer. There's no dissolved cobalt in the solution, and so we're going to look at the activity of the catalyst we've grown on our electrode. And as we saw before, there's a dark coating on the electrode due to the deposition of the catalyst. Now, since there's no additional catalyst forming, since there's no cobalt in solution, we're looking at the authentic voltage required to generate hydrogen and oxygen from water. When we look at the voltmeter now, we have to note that there's no cobalt in solution. We swapped it for fresh phosphate buffer. And so there's no formation of the catalyst occurring now. We're simply doing water splitting to make hydrogen and oxygen. And so the meter reading, the voltage reading on our voltmeter, is the authentic voltage needed to drive this water splitting reaction. You'll note that the voltage reading now is right around 2 volts, whereas when we started, the voltage reading was about 2.25 volts. That extra 250 millivolts is the voltage savings we're getting by growing the catalyst. And that's going to be what we'll use to determine the efficiency of water splitting in this electrochemical cell. What we've shown you today is how to take some simple electronic parts to make a galvanostat, and then use that electrical circuit to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. You've also seen how you can take a simple cobalt sort to make a really active catalyst for that reaction. And you've seen how the activity of the catalyst increasing lowers the voltage needed to run the reaction at a constant rate. So there you have it. You've done one of the most important electrochemical reactions for solar energy storage. You've, you've made, made a catalyst. catalyst.